वेलकाम टू एन पी टी एल मुक्स कोर्स ऑन मेसिन लार्णिंग एंड डीप लार्णिंग फांडामेन्टेल्स एंड एप्लीकेशनस इन माइ लास्ट क्लास आई डिसकास द कन्सेप्ट अफ प्रिन्सिपाल कम्पोनेट एनालसिस टूडे आई एम गोयिंग टू डिसकास द सेम कन्सेप्ट द प्रिन्सिपाल कम्पोनेट एनालसिस बट फ्रम डिफारेन्ट प्रेसपेक्टिव देट इज फ्रम द ट्रेसफर्मेशन पॉइंट अफ भिउ आई उल भी एक्सप्लेनी द कन्सेप्ट अफ प्रिन्सिपाल कम्पोनेट एनालसिस एंड देट ट्रेसफर्मेशन इज कल द के एल ट्रेसफर्मेशन सो इन द के एल ट्रेसफर्मेशन द ओरिजिनल डेटा देट इज हाइलि कोअरलेटेड एंड आफ्टार द ट्रेसफर्मेशन द ट्रेसफर्म डाटा उल भी आनकोअरलेटेड एंड ड्यूरींग द ट्रेसफर्मेशन आई उल भी गेटिंग ए निउ कोअर्डिनेट एक्सेस एंड द ट्रेसफर्म डाटा उल भी एलाइन एलंग द डायरेक्शन अफ दिस निउ कोअर्डिनेट एक्सेस एंड आफ्टार द ट्रेसफर्मेशन द ट्रेसफर्म डाटा उल भी आनकोअरलेटेड उ नो डिफारेन्ट टाइप्स अफ ट्रेसफर्मेशन लाइक डिसिटी द डिस्क्रिट कसाइन ट्रेसफर्मेशन डी एफ टी डिस्क्रिट फोर इयर ट्रेसफर्मेशन हादामार्ट ट्रेसफर्मेशन डिस्क्रिट सैन ट्रेसफर्मेशन सो फर अल दिस ट्रेसफर्मेशन द ट्रेसफर्मेशन कार्नेल्स आर फिक्स बट इन द के एल ट्रेसफर्मेशन द ट्रेसफर्मेशन कार्नेल इज नट फिक्स इट डिपेन्ड्स अन द स्टेटिस्टिक्स अफ द इनपुट डेटा सो नाउ लेटेस्ट डिसकास अबाउट द के एल ट्रेसफर्मेशन एंड आफ्टर द डिसकाशन आई उल भी एक्सप्लेनी द कन्सेप्ट अफ द पी सी ए द प्रिन्सिपाल कम्पोनेट एनालसिस So let us first discuss the concept of the KL transformation. So as I explain, what is the difference between the KL transformation and other transformation like DFT, DCT, or maybe the discrete sign transformation, or the Hadamard transformation, or maybe Haar transformation? In this transformation, the transformation kernels are fixed. So now let us discuss about the KL transformation. That is the KL transformation. So from KL transformation, I will be explaining the concept of that is the principal component analysis. What is KL? KL means Karhunen Lobe transformation. So, what is the basic difference between the KL transformation and other transformation? Like we have the DFT, discrete Fourier transformation; DCT, the discrete cosine transformation; DST, discrete sine transformation. Like this, we have number of transformations. In all these transformations, the transformation kernel is fixed. So, for DFT, the transformation kernel is fixed. For DCT, the transformation kernel is fixed. Like this transformation, all these transformation, the transformation kernels are fixed. So that means the kernel is independent of data. But in the KL transformation, the transformation kernel is derived from data. The transformation kernel uh, depends on the statistical properties of the input data. So that is the difference between the KL transformation and other transformation like uh, DFT, DCT, DST. So, in case of the KL transformation, I am repeating this: that transformation kernel is derived from the statistics of the input data. So, now I am going to explain the concept of the KL transformation. So, let us consider a population vector. The population vector is suppose x. So, it is n-dimensional vector x one, x two. These are the components of this vector. So this is n-dimensional vector. So this is a population vector, n-dimensional vector. From this population vector, what I can determine? I can determine the mean. Mean of x I can determine. So it is nothing but the expected value. Of the vector x. So from this, I can determine the mean mean of the vector x, and also I can determine the covariance matrix of the population vector. So that size of this covariance matrix is n cross n. This is the size of the covariance matrix. That is nothing but expected value x minus mu x x minus mu x transpose so we can determine the covariance matrix like this 
so it is a n by n matrix so in the covariance matrix in cx the elements the elements like this suppose if i consider cii that is the element is xi and cij that is the covariance between xi and xj so the elements of the the covariance matrix cii is xi and cij is mainly the covariance between xi and xj so this covariance matrix that is real and the symmetric it is a real matrix and symmetric matrix so from this matrix we can get a set of n orthonormal vectors so we can get from this covariance matrix what i can get i can get a set of a set of n orthonormal vectors and these are called the eigen vectors so these are the eigen vectors so these eigen vectors are represented like this ei so these are the eigen vectors so you can see from the covariance matrix we can determine the eigen vectors so after this let us move to the next slide so what we have determined from the covariance matrix we have the covariance matrix cx and from this what we have determined we have determined eigen vectors that means we can get a set of n orthonormal vectors n number of orthonormal vectors and that is nothing but the eigen vectors and corresponding to this ei corresponding to this ei i have lambda i and that is nothing but the eigen values this is nothing but the eigen values so you can see what is the step the step is from the covariance matrix we can determine n number of orthonormal vectors these are the eigen vectors and corresponding to these eigen vectors i have the eigen values so these eigen values are arranged in the descending order of the magnitude so i can write this eigen values are arranged in the descending order of magnitude so all these uh, eigen values are arranged in the descending order of magnitude like this lambda j is greater than lambda j plus 1 like this i am arranging so j is equal to 0 1 2 and minus 1 so you can see uh, we are arranging the eigen values in the descending order of magnitude now we have to construct the transformation matrix so from the set of eigen vectors we can from a matrix the matrix is the a a is the transformation matrix transformation matrix a i can form with the help of the eigen vectors so how to form this the first row of a first row of a matrix is the eigen vector is the eigen vectors is the eigen vector corresponding to corresponding to corresponding to the largest eigen value like this we have to consider so a is a transformation matrix so you can see 
I am making the transformation matrix. So first row is the eigenvector. So suppose eigenvector is E1 and this corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. And similarly, E2 is the second eigenvector corresponding to the second largest eigenvalue. And what is the last row of the transformation matrix? It is the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue. So the last row I will be getting, last row of the matrix A is the eigenvector corresponding to the smallest eigenvalue. So like this, we can construct the transformation matrix. After this, I will go for the transformation and that is nothing but the KL transformation. What is the KL transformation? The transformation I can write like this. And this transformation is actually the KL transformation. KL transformation is Y is equal to A. A is the transformation matrix. X is the population vector and the mean mean of this vector x. So here you can see what is x? x is nothing but the data vector and uh, this mu x is the mean vector, it is the mean. So I am getting the transformation, the transformation is y is equal to a x minus mu x. So the transform data is nothing but the y, y is the transform data the original data is the x. So what is the properties of y? The properties, properties of y. So what are the properties of y? That is the transform data. So one property is very important. The mean of the transform data is 0. So y is equal to 0. It is 0. And cy, that is the covariance matrix of y, Cy is the covariance matrix, covariance matrix of Y which is generated from, which is generated from, generated from the covariance matrix of X and the transformation matrix and the transformation matrix transformation matrix is A. So that means the CY is nothing but A C X A T. So this is the covariance matrix of the transform data. Covariance matrix of the transform data is this is the expression. So how to get this expression if you see Cy is nothing but expected value of y, y transpose because the mean of y is equal to 0. So the covariance matrix of y is nothing but E, y, y transpose. So there is the covariance matrix. So which can be written like this expected value of A, x minus mu x and after this I have to write y transpose. So that is nothing but A x minus mu x transpose. So which is equal to A expected value x minus mu x x minus mu x transpose and A transpose. So if you see this is nothing but A and this expected value of x minus mu x, x minus mu x transpose, that is nothing but the covariance matrix of x, cx and a transpose. So from this actually we obtain this. So this is the expression for the covariance matrix of the transform data. So let us move to the next slide. So what will be the nature of the covariance matrix of cy? The nature of the covariance matrix of cy will be like this. So this is a matrix. So diagonal elements are the like this lambda 1, lambda 2, like this up to lambda n. And if you see this row, these are all zeros. These are zeros.
So you can see the diagonal elements are lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 like this up to lambda n and off diagonal elements are 0. So you can see this off diagonal elements, off diagonal elements are 0. So that means it perfectly decorrelates data. So that means perfectly decorrelates the input data, perfectly decorrelates data. So elements of the vector y is uncorrelated. That means the transform data is uncorrelated. So I can write, I can write the elements of the vector, elements of the vector y are uncorrelated. So that is the meaning of this covariance matrix. And one thing is that eigenvalues of cy is same as that of cx. So that I can write the eigenvalue value of the covariance matrix cy is same as that of cx. So that is also one property and similarly another is the eigen vectors of cy is same as that of cx. So these are properties. So you can see that the KL transformation is y is equal to a x minus mu x. We consider this one. So you can see the original data, they are highly correlated. But after the transformation, I am getting y that is the transform data are uncorrelated because I have the diagonal covariance matrix. Since I have the diagonal covariance matrix, off diagonal elements are all 0. So that means I can say the transform data are highly uncorrelated, totally uncorrelated. The transform data are totally uncorrelated. So this is the observation after the KL transformation. So let us discuss one example how to determine this transformation matrix from the input data. So let us consider one example. So how to determine the transformation matrix. So a binary image is considered. So let us consider this binary image and suppose these are the pixel positions. So let us consider this image. So at a particular point suppose 3, 4, x is 3 and y is 4. So suppose this x and this y corresponding to this position the pixel is present. So that means when the pixel is present I am considering it as 1. If the pixel is not present when the object is not present then it is the element is 0. So this is a binary image and similarly I can consider another 4, 3 and suppose 4, 4. So a particular object is considered and that is represented by a binary image. 
फोर 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 फाइव फाइव फोर फाइव 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 सिक्स एंड सिक्स फाइव सो दिस ऑब्जेक्ट इज कन्सिडार्ड सपोज आई एम कन्सिडारिंग दिस ऑब्जेक्ट एंड आई हेव द कोर्डिनेट एक्स एंड वाई सो ह्वाट इज द पपुलेशन भेक्टर इन दिस केस द पपुलेशन भेक्टर पपुलेशन भेक्टर आई कैन कन्सिडार इज एक्स सो थ्री फोर इन द थ्री फोर पजिशन द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट थ्री फोर इफ यू सी एक्स इज थ्री वाई इज फोर द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट अनादार वन इज एट द पॉइंट फोर थ्री द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट फोर एंड थ्री अनादार पॉइंट इज फोर फोर द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट फोर फाइव द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट एंड अनादार वन इज फाइव फोर फाइव फोर द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट फाइव फाइव द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट फाइव सिक्स द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट एंड सिक्स फाइव द पिक्सल इज प्रेजेंट सो आई एम कन्सिडारिंग दिस केसेस एंड बेस्ट ऑन दिस आई कैन डिटारमाइन द पपुलेशन भेक्टर सो देट मीन्स व्हाट आई वांट टू डिटारमाइन आई वांट टू डिटारमाइन द के एल ट्रांसफर्मेशन के एल ट्रांसफर्म आई एम डिटारमाइनिंग अब द पिक्सल्स वेर द अबजेक्ट इज प्रेजेंट where the object is present so you can see the object i am considering and these pixels at the position 3443444455555665 the object is present corresponding to these positions so eight numbers of 2d vectors that is nothing but the eight numbers of two dimensional vectors and from this population vector i can easily determine the mean so there is a mean vector i can determine so the mean vector will be something like 4.5 and 4.5 you can determine and also uh, you can determine the covariance matrix the covariance matrix is the cx and that is nothing but the expected value of x minus mu x and x minus mu x transpose so this covariance matrix you can determine so for determining the this covariance matrix what you can do you can just determine x1 minus mu x and after this x2 minus mu x x3 minus mu x so you have to determine like this and from x1 minus mu x also you can determine x1 minus mu x transpose you can determine so uh, from this you can determine the covariance matrix the covariance matrix is nothing but this is x1 minus mu x you can determine and x1 minus mu x transpose you can determine so like this you can determine like this you can determine all these values you can determine after this you have to take the average of all this to get the covariance matrix the covariance matrix is the cx you can determine the covariance matrix so after determining the covariance matrix you have to determine the eigen values and the corresponding eigen vectors what you need to determine you have to determine the eigen values and the corresponding eigen vectors that you can determine from the covariance matrix so after this you can apply the transformation the transform is already i have defined y is equal to a x minus mu x you can determine this transformation so you will be getting the transform data so after the transformation what you can see the origin of the object is located at the centroid of the object so that means i will be getting the origin of the new coordinate system so origin is suppose this is the origin so origin is located 
at the centroid of the object and the axis will be parallel to the direction of the eigen vectors. So, corresponding to this problem I have two eigen vectors. So, eigen vectors I have two eigen vectors one is E 1 and another one is E 2. So, that means the origin of the new coordinate system I am getting a new coordinate system and origin is located at the centroid of the object and the axis will be parallel to the direction of the eigen vectors. So, you can see I am getting a new coordinate system and this new coordinate these are the this is the axis. So, one is E 1 and another one is E 2. So, E 1 is the eigen vector and E 2 is the eigen vector. So, that means after the transformation I am getting a new coordinate system and the transform data will be aligned in the direction of the new coordinate axis that is in the direction of the eigen vectors. So, that is why this scale transformation is also called the rotation transformation because I am getting a new coordinate system because I am getting a new coordinate system and the new axis are the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix. So, that means data will be aligned to the direction of the eigen vectors and because of these alignments different elements of y will be uncorrelated. So, I am repeating this because of this alignment, alignment means I am aligning the transform data along the direction of the eigen vectors and because of these alignments different elements of y will be uncorrelated that is the interpretation of this uh, KL transformation y is equal to a x minus mu x. So, I am repeating it again because it is very important. So, after the transformation I will be getting a new coordinate system the axis of the new coordinate system will be parallel to the direction of the eigen vectors and because of these alignments different elements of y will be uncorrelated. So, that is the interpretation of the KL transformation. Now, let us consider the reconstruction of the original data from y that is how to reconstruct x from y. So, that is the reconstruction problem. So, let us move to the next slide reconstruction. So, how to reconstruct x from y that is to reconstruct x from y already we have done the transformation. So, we know that y is equal to a x minus mu x. So, this is the transformation. So, this y is what? y is nothing but the it is a n dimensional so this transformation matrix it is a orthogonal transformation matrix so a inverse is equal to a transpose that is the orthogonal matrix so what is the inverse scale transformation inverse scale transformation i can write like this inverse scale transformation is nothing but x I am reconstructing a transpose y plus mu x. This a inverse is equal to a transpose that is nothing but the orthogonal transformation. So, you can see I can reconstruct the original data. So, you can see this transformation matrix a that is formed by all the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix C x that means I am repeating this the transformation matrix A is constructed by considering all the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix C x. But if I only consider k number of eigen vectors then I will be getting the transformation matrix A k. In the A k that means what we are considering we are only considering the k number of eigen vectors that is we are only considering k number of 
eigen vectors in the case of a we have been considering all the eigen vectors but now we are considering k number of eigen vectors so that means a k we are considering that is the transformation matrix k number of eigen vectors of the covariance matrix c x what we are considering the k largest eigen vectors we are considering k largest eigen vectors are considering so what will be the dimension of a k the dimension of a k is k cross n because we are considering only k number of eigen vectors so dimension will be k cross n so corresponding to this my transformation will be y is equal to a k so in place of a i am considering the a k and this a k i can consider as a truncated transformation matrix because i am not considering all the eigen vectors for constructing the uh, transformation matrix a k i can consider as the truncated transformation matrix so i can write truncated truncated transformation matrix because we are only considering the k number of eigen vectors for constructing the transformation matrix so a k x minus mu x so what is the dimension of y the dimension of y will be k what is the dimension of a k the dimension of a k is k cross n and what is the dimension of x the dimension of x is n cross 1 n dimensional so we are getting this so in this case for the transformation we are considering only the k number of eigen vectors so that means these are i can consider as the principal components so these are actually i can consider the principal components principal components that is the largest eigen values we are considering and corresponding eigen vectors and these are called the principal components so in the principal component analysis this is the case that means we are considering the largest eigen values and corresponding eigen vectors so this should be k largest eigen values so now how to do the reconstruction so move to the next slide so how to do the reconstruction so if i want to reconstruct x from y reconstruction of x from y so in this case if i want to reconstruct x from y we will not be able to get the perfect reconstruction because we are not considering all the eigen vectors for constructing the transformation matrix so perfect reconstruction is not possible so we are getting the approximate reconstruction so this is approximate reconstruction of x a k transpose y plus mu x so here you can see the dimension of x will be n dimension of a k transpose that will be k cross n dimension of y will be k so this the dimension of x that will be the same dimension of x but approximate value of x so we are getting the approximate value of x because we are not considering all the eigen vectors for constructing the transformation matrix so this a k you can see the a k is dimension is what is the dimension of a k it is k cross n what is the dimension of y the dimension of y is k and the approximate x not the perfect reconstruction is possible so dimension of x will be n so this is the reconstruction of x from y and we are only considering k number of eigen vectors corresponding to k number of largest eigen values now in this case what is the the mean square error 
the mean square error is defined like this the summation from j is equal to 1 to n lambda j minus summation of i is equal to 1 to k lambda i so in the first case you can see what is lambda j that is the eigen um, values so in the eigen value we are considering i is equal to 1 to n so in the eigen value you can see j is equal to 1 to n we are considering that means we are considering all the eigen values and minus lambda i that is also the eigen value from i is equal to k that means we are considering only k number of largest eigen values so that is equal to j is equal to k plus 1 and n that is lambda j so that is nothing but the sum of the sum of the neglected eigen values so sum of the neglected eigen values this KL transformation is called optimum transformation because it minimizes the mean square error of reconstruction error between x and x hat. So that means I can say it is the optimum transformation why it is called the optimum transformation because we have to minimize the MAC the mean square error of reconstruction error reconstruction error between x and x hat so the KL transformation is called the optimum transformation so if I consider all the eigen vectors for the construction of the transformation matrix then the reconstruction error will be zero I can do perfect reconstruction but if I consider only the k number of eigen vectors then it is not possible to perfectly reconstruct the original data that original data is x so this is about the reconstruction of the vector x from y so now let us consider how actually you can apply this transformation for the image the two dimensional image and how it can be used for data compression so let us move to the next slide so how to apply how to apply KL transformation that is the PCA the principal component analysis how to apply KL transformation in an image so image is a 2d array of numbers so let us consider one image So let us consider one n by n image and suppose x0, x1, x2, suppose this is one is suppose xi like this. So we can consider every column as a vector. So you can see we have n number of vectors. So image is nothing but the 2D array of numbers so image i can write it is a 2d array of quantized intensity values so you can see uh, what we are considering the data is represented as as a vector so you can see i have n number of vectors x0 x1 x2 like this i have n number of vectors so from n number of vectors i can determine the mean 1 by n summation i is equal to 0 to n minus 1 
xi. And also I can determine the covariance matrix. Cx is nothing but 1 by n. i is equal to 0 to n minus 1. xi minus mu x. xi minus mu x transpose. So we can determine the covariance matrix Cx and the mean mu x we can determine. So dimension of mu x is n dimensional. So you can see the dimension n. And what is the dimension of Cx? The dimension is n cross n. Dimension of Cx is n cross n. So from Cx, I can determine the eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors. So I can determine eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. So after determining the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors, that means we are determining lambda i, that is the eigenvalues and corresponding to i is equal to 0, 1 up to n minus 1. So n number of eigenvalues we can determine and corresponding eigenvectors. So i is equal to 0, 1 up to n minus 1 we can determine. So n number of eigenvalues and n number of Eigen vectors. So after determining that this eigenvalues and the Eigen vectors, we can determine the transformation matrix. So let us move to the next slide. How to determine the transformation matrix? The transformation matrix is the A transformation matrix. Transformation matrix is A. So that is determined from the Eigen vectors. So first row is the eigenvector E not T that corresponds to the largest eigenvalue. Next one is E1 T like this E n minus 1 T transpose. So because we are considering this transpose because the vector is normally represented as column vector. And in this case what we are considering lambda not is greater than lambda 1 is greater than lambda 2 is greater than up to lambda n minus 1. So corresponding to lambda naught, what is my eigenvector? Eigenvector is E naught. Corresponding to lambda 1, my eigenvector is E1. So you can see I am constructing the transformation matrix with the help of the eigenvectors. So the first row is the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue. Second row is the eigenvector corresponding to the second largest eigenvalue. So like this, I am constructing the transformation matrix. So after this, suppose we are considering the truncated transformation matrix because in the truncated transformation matrix, we have to consider k number of largest eigenvectors. So what is the truncated, truncated transformation matrix? So we are considering only the k number of eigenvectors. So the truncated transformation matrix is A k, E naught t, E one t, like this. Only we are considering the k number. So it is k minus one transpose, and this is the truncated transformation matrix. So first k number of eigenvectors we are considering corresponding to a k number of largest eigenvalues. So now we have to apply the transformation, transformation of every column vector of the image. I have to apply the transformation for all the columns of the image. So for every xi of the image, we are getting yi. So we are applying the transformation column wise. So suppose I am getting the transformation yi and ak is the truncated transformation matrix. xi is a particular column of the image we are considering like this. So for all the columns, I have to apply this transformation. This is the KL transformation. So i is equal to 0, 1, up to n minus 1 because I have n number of columns. So for every column, that means for every xi, I have to determine yi. That is the transform vector I have to determine. So yi, what is the dimension of yi? Dimension of y is k cross 1. 
and this is the modified uh, transformation matrix the dimension is k cross n and this is the the input vector it is the dimension is n cross 1 this is the mean vector so it is n cross 1 so that means i will be getting n number of y's i will be getting and finally i will be getting n number of yi i will be getting so if the transformation of all the column vectors of the 2d image is done then we will be getting n transform vector yi with the dimension k so what will be the transform image so move to the next slide so transform image will be transform image what is the dimension of this k cross n and what is the original size original size of the image is n cross n so you can see the dimension is reduced by this transformation and you can see we are considering only the k number of eigen vectors corresponding to the k number of largest eigen values and that is why uh, this is called the pca the principal component analysis because we are considering the k number of largest eigen vectors corresponding to the largest eigen values so how to reconstruct the original image so we have to do the reconstruction so for reconstruction this approximate image i am getting this is the approximate image i am getting so that is nothing but a k transpose y i plus mu x so this is the reconstruction formula so in this case a k is not a square matrix so for this what we can consider maybe pseudo inverse we have to consider for determining the inverse the pseudo inverse by singular value decomposition to calculate the inverse of a non-square matrix that we can consider so we are determining the x i so collection of all x i that means the collection of collection of all the x i's collection of all x i will give will give the dimension and will give the image of the dimension n cross n that is the reconstructed or the approximate image so in this xi uh, what is the dimension of this xi the dimension of xi was n this is the dimension of xi so this collection of all the xi's will give the image the reconstructed image of the size n cross n so you can see how to reconstruct the original image so now let us see how to get xi hat that is the the reconstructed value of xi so for the reconstruction what information i need the information i need ak that is we need to save ak and also what information i need yi yi so i is equal to 0 1 up to n minus 1 so these two information these two information one is ak another one is yi i need to reconstruct xi these two information i need now if i want to do the compression data compression the compression depends on the value of k or the compression of the data the compression depends on the value of k so if i consider suppose k is equal to 1 that means we are considering only one eigen vector for the transformation matrix if i consider k is equal to 2 that means we are considering two eigen vectors for the transformation matrix so if i increased the value of k that means the quality of the image will be improved with the increase of the number of eigen vectors so that means the quality of the image will be improved with the increase of number of eigen vectors so if i consider all the eigen vectors of the covariance matrix for the construction of the transformation matrix 
then the reconstruction would be perfect. So that is the case. So this is about the KL transformation. And you can see how actually the principal component concept is coming from the KL transformation. So in this class, I discussed the concept of the KL transformation. And finally, I have explained the concept of the principal component analysis. So what are the advantages of the KL transformation? The first advantage is that it can perfectly decorrelate the input data. The original data is highly correlated and after the transformation, the transform data will be uncorrelated. And energy compaction is very high in case of the KL transformation. So what are the disadvantages of the KL transformation? In the KL transformation, the transformation kernel is dependent on the statistics of the input data. So from the input data, we have to determine the uh, mean vector, we have to determine the covariance matrix. From the covariance matrix, I have to determine the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And from this, I can determine the transformation matrix. For non-stationary data or for the non-stationary signal, it is very difficult to compute the transformation matrix for each and every instant. So that is why the computational complexity is more for the non-stationary data. So this KL transformation cannot be applied in the real time. So if I want to go for image compression or the video compression with the help of the KL transformation, it is not possible because of this uh, case. The case is if the data is non-stationary, we have to determine the transformation matrix for different different instance because the transformation kernel depends on the statistics of the input data. So that is why the real time implementation is not possible in the KL transformation. So that is the main disadvantage of the KL transformation. So let me stop here today. Thank you.